in my career, I have found the women I've worked with to be incredibly supportive of me, except for Sarah Paulson. It was really, that was challenging. I play Tony Bradley, who is Ben Bradley, the editor-in-chief of the Washington Post's second wife, who was an artist and a sculptor and a mother and a child of incredibly progressive parents. She had a great big brain and a great big heart and was sort of uncomfortable in Washington social circles, even though she was very much a part of it. Her sister uh, had had a big affair with JFK. I found it all very fascinating and all interesting and all surprising and all inspiring. And Meg Greenfield <laughs> was a Pulitzer Prize winning um, editorialist and journalist. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Who was one of the one of the first women to run an editorial page. She at this time of the that the film is set was the deputy editor. She was assisting Phil Jalan, and she was probably at the paper only three or four years at this point when the Pentagon Papers were published. Uh, but she went on to become very dear friends of K. Graham's and to become a very influential member of the Washington Literati. She had a lot of integrity, and she she ran that page with a very strong sense of right and wrong, but she also kept her own personal opinion out of it. What was necessarily best for the paper or the conversation wasn't necessarily always what was what her opinion was. Mm -hmm. And she was able to keep those things separate in a way that I really respect. And was by all accounts a really wry, hilarious, um, smart, witty woman. I would have loved to know her. Have you had a moment recently where you've kind of been like, oh, this is something I still have to deal with as a woman? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. And it wasn't a, a sexual dynamic, but it was a power oh. issue in terms of, of I really did not feel that it was okay to speak about something for fear of being labeled um, difficult. And I, and, and I regret it, and I won't do it again. Mm. I won't do it again. For me, I haven't experienced a lot of the sort of sexual harassment in our industry. I've worked with really, really profoundly respectful men of maybe another generation. They're sort of younger and they have these really strong women in their lives. But power is a different issue. Yeah. I've been in a lot of rooms where I felt like um, I was excluded from conversations. Or even that my comments when they mm -hmm. were heard were dismissed and sort of openly and jarringly dismissed mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a really humiliating way. And so for me, it's been about power rather than me sex. Too. And those scenes with Catherine Graham when she's in the boardroom and she knows the answer to the question, but it takes a man to amplify her speaking were very painful for me to watch. We didn't learn in 1971. We have a long way to go. Fear not your own voice, your own personhood. I, I say that in a sort of, how, how does one, how, how does that become actionable? How does one do that? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I suppose you have to recognize the sound of it, I guess, when you... And when also you allyship. I, mm -hmm. I think there's a myth that's been uh, perpetrated about women, about how women treat each other mm -hmm. and who we are to each other. That's actually very inaccurate. You would do well to seek out those mentors in your own life, but also to be that mentor, even from the jump to a person who's younger or less experienced than you. And when we start doing that, then I think we can start to build the kind of coalitions we need to be heard. Yeah.